All right, another day, another video about the Android 12 custom ROM. This time we are doing things a little differently. We are not going for a complete review because I've not tried the ROM yet. But instead, Sanat, one of my elite testers, a big thank you to him. He has tried this ROM. He has used it for a couple of days. He's reviewed it. So we have the numbers ready. We have the opinion ready. But I thought in this video, let me also show you how to install it. You know, so first we will go ahead and install it. And then we will look at the benchmarks, the battery stats and the overall opinions of this particular ROM. So before we get into the details, well, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything. And it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like minded people, please join us on Telegram. We have more than 1500 people with similar devices there. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, Please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So let's see what we have here. We have official S12 OSS vendor voltage OS updated on the 13th of December 2021. Now this is a vanilla build, which means you will need Google Apps. The link is mentioned in the description. You have the support group. You have XDA and flashing guide. We will look at that and let's look at the change log over here. Okay, device side, there are a lot of changes, which means this ROM would be great. And that is the opinion of Sanat as well. So shifted to new trees, thanks to this, this, this. Shifted to Soviet star kernel, that is good. Updated blobs from this thing. Noticeable improvements in active and idle rain, good for battery life. Better heat management compared to old blobs. Fixed camera not working in few Telegram clients. Added DC dimming and high brightness mode. Compiled using latest Clang. Shifted from stock camera to, to Graphene OS camera app. Fixed OK Google Hotword permission. This need full G apps package to work. OK. Latest Pixel offline charging images used. That's great. Update dose package, many features included, added FPS info tile. So those are good things. Now, let's see what do what they have to say as far as the flashing procedure is concerned. So we are on XDA now. And this is the top result. Okay. So clean flash is recommended. Use, use Orange Fox recovery from here. Wipe all the following Dalvik cache system vendor data. Flash latest Android 11 firmware of your region. Flash Voltage OS, G apps plus DFE, wipe cache in Dalvik and reboot to the ROM, right? So we've done all of that. What are the files that we need? You of course need to have Orange Fox recovery installed. You need to have the ROM, you need to have G apps and you need to have DFE. If you need root access, you can flash that later after the ROM has settled down, okay? So in our case, we have the three files in our phone's internal memory. That is DFE, then we have Flame G apps, we have the firmware, and then we have voltage. So basically there are four files that are needed. Now let's go to TWRP over here, restart, select recovery. Let's go to the recovery and flash this wonderful ROM. I tried this when it was initially released and it was giving good experience. So now it should be even better. All right, now once you've booted into TWRP, go to wipe, advanced wipe, Dalvik cache system vendor data. I'm not wiping internal storage because that's where my files are. Okay, now once everything is wiped, we will go in a sequence. So first, we will flash the firmware, add more zips. Then we need the ROM, add more zips. Then we need the G apps, add more zips and we need DFE. Now there are four files. So this will take about two to three minutes to flash. So please be patient when that happens. All right, now, as you can see over here, the ROM has flashed. Just go through this log to make sure you don't have any errors. All files have flashed successfully. Then go to wipe cache in Dalvik. Okay. And go to the main menu, go to wipe, go to format data and type in yes. Now we are doing this for users who are not decrypted. If they enter the password and unlock TWRP and then install this ROM and just reboot, they will be in a boot loop. So now format data is done and we are decrypted. So let's go to reboot system. Okay, and just like that, we have booted to the home screen. I'm quickly going to sign in and skip the setup part over here. Now, while we are setting up the device, it's always a good practice to go ahead and set up the fingerprint because that will give us a clear indication of how good or bad the fingerprint is. Although 
from the information that I have, the fingerprint scanner on this ROM is working pretty well on this particular latest version. So it's enrolling just fine right now. Let's see here. Okay, keep going, keep going. Different areas of the finger, it enrolls just fine. So that's good. Finally, good to see custom ROMs based on Android 12 getting the fingerprint scanner absolutely fine because on custom ROMs for the K20 Pro, that was one of the issues. Now you have a beautiful Voltage OS logo and very, very few applications. You have a very basic camera application from Graphene OS, I believe, is what was mentioned in the change log over here. The app icon animations are rock solid. There is a very, very basic dialer application. Even if you try to make a call over here, Right, so you don't have call recorder built in. And if you talk about the launcher, it's a very basic launcher over here, which has some developer options. Moving on, you have your Android 12 widgets doing a great job. And then you have wallpaper and style, wherein you just have, oh, you have more than one wallpaper. So that's good. So let's say go red over here, tick mark, and let's see Monet UI doing its job. Okay, for some reason, Set wallpaper, hide UI preview, show UI preview, home screen and lock screen. Okay, yep. So Monet UI is working great. It's doing a great job. At the same time, if you go to wallpaper and style and enable themed icons, you will see that themed icons are present. And just see, there are literally like 12 applications and how smooth and fluid this particular ROM is. Now let's quickly go to settings over here. Let's go to about phone and let's go to the Android version. You have the Voltage OS logo, Android version 12, 5th December security patch, and the kernel is the Soviet star kernel, so it should be a great performer. Remember that. Now, apart from this, you have something called as Power Hub, and the way they have laid down this particular ROM's customization is really, really neat. I'm not gonna go to each and every option, but I'll quickly show you each and every option. You can probably pause the video and have a look at it. So you have status bar, let's see here, wow. I've got to try this ROM and do a personal customization review or something because this does look like having a lot of customization. And on the first boot as well, this ROM is really, really smooth. We will look at the benchmark numbers, of course, and the battery backup, but just see how the amount of customization is present on this particular ROM. And that's really, really neat. You have notification access and customization as well. And then you have miscellaneous as well. Now, if you actually go to battery over here, you don't have thermal profiles, but if you search for, say the gaming mode, game settings, turn on game dashboard, Nope, I don't see the game dashboard. Even if you go to settings and you go to apps, you don't have the new game space, which is available in Dubfest and a few other custom ROMs. So the gaming mode and thermal profiles are missing. I think they can add that later. And uh, even without thermal profiles, remember on the yesterday's review in uh, Siberia OS, the ROM was performing really, really great. So, you know, that's everything that's present as far as customization is concerned. As far as uh, Play Store device certification is concerned, let's quickly go ahead and launch Play Store. Let's go to settings. Okay, it's still loading. So let's quickly have a look at the screenshots of the performance numbers. All right, so safety net passes, fine. DRM info is okay. All those things are taken care of. Let's quickly have a look at the battery backup and charging. So the first thing that we have here is charging. Charging from 73 to 95%. That's 22% took 25 minutes. So 100% from one to 100% should take about one hour 10 minutes or one hour 20 minutes at the most, which is really, really neat. If you talk about the battery backup, as you can see over here, we have two hours and 55 minutes of screen on time and the phone was still at 65%. That means the battery backup numbers are really, really good. Moving on, Soviet Star, great performance, single core 744, 2571 multi-core for a 855, that's decent numbers. And if you talk about the thermal throttling test, average score of 17786 GIPS with 91% throttling. So all in all, if you ask me, Voltage OS in itself is well, is a really, really good deal. You can go ahead and flash it. There are some things missing here and there, but that should not break your deal. It is definitely a smooth ROM. It does come with a camera application. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this install and review of this OS? Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.